Welcome to Breaking News. We've got another great bit of news coming up for you. But first, make sure you're subscribed to Breaking News and hit the bell icon so you'll know when we post a new video. Also, after watching, join in the conversation below in the comment section. Now, here's your news. Jim Jordan catches Biden engaging in illegal quid pro quo, threatening American companies. House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan has caught Democrat President Joe Biden engaging in an illegal quid pro quo. Jordan also revealed evidence that Biden has been threatening American companies in direct violation of the Constitution. The evidence was released by Jordan in the latest installment of his Facebook files based on internal communications files that were handed over to Congress by Mark Zuckerberg's big tech company. Journalist Michael Schellenberger broke down what the GOP discovered. Many insist it wasn't illegal for the White House to demand greater censorship by Facebook, but it was. Not only did Biden threaten Facebook's legal, SEC. 2.30, status, Facebook desperately needed Biden to force Europe to allow data flows into the U.S., which he did. Quid pro quo. A lot has come out about Facebook censorship, so our new scoop may seem like old news, but it's not. What we discovered is that White House exercised a different form of leverage over Facebook, one as powerful, and maybe more so, than threatening its legal existence. Until now, critics of censorship have focused on Biden's threat to revoke Facebook Section 230 liability protection. The new emails reveal a new form of White House leverage, its conditional willingness to stop the EU from demanding Facebook halt data flows to the U.S. As context, about 10% of Facebook's ad revenue, $1.2 billion, comes from selling ads in the EU. Doing so depends on data flows from EU to U.S., Schellenberger explains. The EU has demanded an end to those data flows, and it may find Meta, Facebook's parent company, a record $1.3 billion for refusing to do so. I'll explain why EU didn't want Facebook to transfer EU data to the U.S. in a moment. What matters now is understanding that when Biden officials demanded greater censorship by Facebook executives, those same execs were worried WH might not support them against the EU. Here's the smoking gun email senior Facebook exec Nick Clegg, a former UK politician, sent it in July 2021. He tells his staff to carry out White House censorship demands because of the bigger fish we have to fry with the administration, data flows, etc. A potential end of EU to US data flows is an even more urgent threat to Facebook's business than White House threats to Section 230. While neither Congress nor the Biden administration have shown much willingness to follow through on their threats to modify Section 230, the European Union has imposed fine after fine on Meta Facebook. Last NOV, EU regulators fined Meta $291 million for a data leak. In Jan, they fined Meta $429 million for making users accept personalized ads in order to use Facebook. Meta is a rich company, but a few hundred million here, and a billion there, starts to add up. But the real threat from the EU comes to its core business, using user data to target advertising. If the EU doesn't allow Facebook to control that data, then EU is destroying the core of Facebook's business. In the end, the quid pro quo deal was done. Facebook did the censoring that Biden admin requested, and after years of talks, the Biden admin forced EU to make a deal, the EU-US Data Privacy Framework, which they announced last month. This censorship for data scheme violates the US Constitution, Schellenberger notes. This is a gross violation of the First Amendment, Columbia Law School professor Philip Hamburger told Public. Not only because it involves what the Supreme Court considers coercion, but also because it's equally unconstitutional for the government to seek censorship through contract or conspiracy. And that's what happened here. 